Hello and welcome to Microsoft's Higher Education Remote Learning Series. COVID-19 has created a challenging year for Australian universities. The impact has been so fast moving, there's been little time to shift courses online, to upskill staff, and to figure out how to deliver engaging online learning experiences for students. Join me in the next four episodes, where I'll be interviewing some academics from Australian universities who've been teaching via online tools for quite some time. The idea is to inspire others to help talk about some of the tools and strategies that they've been using to create rich online experiences and to have a discussion about what works and what doesn't. I really hope you enjoy the series. And in this episode, I uh, have the great pleasure of talking to Professor Michael Sankey. He's the Director of Learning Transformations at Griffith University. His areas of research um, have been focused around technology-enabled pedagogies, leadership in technology-enhanced um, teaching, and the use of social media in learning, and also around blended learning. In fact, Michael is the current president of the Australian Council on Open Distance and E-Learning. So there's not more poignant time, Michael, to be able to have a chat with you about some of your uh, insights and uh, ideas about um, how we can switch to remote learning. So welcome to you. Thank you a lot, mate. Cheers. Yeah. It's good to be with you. Um, so first of all, maybe to start, would you be able to just describe what your role is at Griffith University and then maybe also as a second part to that, the, the uh, work of the Australasian Council of Open Distance and E-Learning. Sure. So at Griffith, we have a group called Learning Futures, uh, which is really looking at the way in which we're emerging into new ways of teaching and learning. Uh, my role as a Director of Learning Transformation is really to look at the, the new and emerging technologies we're using in this space, uh, the way in which that fits with pedagogy, uh, the way in which uh, we trial and validate uh, these tools in terms of practice for our students and staff, uh, and particularly, I suppose, to then disseminate that, to promote the use of these tools, and then to um, then to promote that more broadly across the sector. And that's where the role of the Australasian Council of Open Distance and e Learning comes in, because I'm the Griffith representative on that council. Now, it's a, it's a council, not an association. So unlike an association where anybody can join the association, a council is made up of representatives of an institution. So as a director of TEL, and in a sense, that's what I am at, at Griffith, uh, we, every university has a representative on the council and I represent Griffith on the council. And also at this point now I've been elected as president. So we have all the directors, if you like, of TEL mm -hmm. working together mm -hmm. to share solutions and to look at uh, ways to move forward in this space. Yeah, it would be a busy time. I'd imagine there'd be lots of uh, really yeah. fruitful conversations. Those forums we have are just going nuts at the moment, with yeah. uh, <laughs> particularly looking at things like exams and what we're doing to, to engage yeah. students who are at a distance or, you know, who aren't coming on campus and things like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so um, linked, linked to that or both of those roles really, um, you know, educating students online is something that has kind of been happening for a little while now and is now sort of being forced upon us at scale. Yeah. And so the first thing that some people might think, whether it be, um, you know, lecturers or whatever might be thinking, oh, well, I need to do live video calls, you know, live video content similar to what we're doing now. Yeah. Um, and that's the vehicle or the mechanism to make a rich classroom online. Yeah. And so, so what would you say? Is there is there more to it than that, or is that a starting point, or how does that sort of fit in with everything else that happens around online learning? Do you think? Yeah. So we've been banging away at online learning for you know, a good twenty years now. I think I started teaching online in two thousand and one, which is kind of eighteen years ago now, nineteen years ago now, I'll strike. And so at that point, we had our kind of LMSs, and we had discussion forums, and we could share files and things like that. And uh, you know that was that was great at the time, but uh, some of us have moved way past that. Others are kind of still in that in that space because a lot of the research we did at that point was kind of proving that this stuff worked, but then we kind of proved it and then have left it there instead of moving now further forward into the newer technologies that are now emerging. So we now see universities going into a lot more work integrated learning the thought that the students are part of the, the teaching process as well as the learning process, that uh, we're training people for a profession, not just uh, not just in, uh, enriching their minds for the, the greater good, but we're actually working towards them becoming ongoing professions. And it's, it's important for us to understand that 
they are an emerging professional from the first day they come to university, not mm. after three years of study are they emerging professionals. So the whole emphasis in terms of the way we teach online is to prepare students for this place of work that they're going to be in and not just the place of work that they're going to be in for the rest of their lives, but also the thought that they are going to be you know, transitioning across all kinds of different work scenarios over the future years. So we need to look at tools that uh, will prepare them for that workplace. We kind of know that most workplaces don't use an LMS generally. I mean, some do for some some professional development, but generally that's not a tool that's used for people working together. So what we've been looking for more recently, and we think we've found in something like you know, Microsoft Teams is a tool that allows us to uh, work people towards their future employment. We know that you know, students come in at one end with the use of some learning management system at schools and the use of Office 365 and things like that at school. And we kind of start them off, scaffold them in our learning early through the learning management system. But, you know, really at the other end, they're really going to be using these kind of productivity tools in the workplace. They're not going to be using things like LMSs. So, it's incumbent upon us really to to manage the students through this process and to work them towards the types of tools that they'll be using in the workplace when they leave university. So, you know, tools like Office 365, you know, things like CAD if you're an engineer or, you know, the, or, you know, MYOB if you're an accountant and things like yeah. that. Those types of tools that they're going to be working in the workplace with, they need to, by the time they're finishing or coming towards the end of the study, they need to be not only proficient in the use of those tools, but also how to collaborate with others around the use of those tools. Yeah, and I suppose, uh, you know, uh, many of the tools that are being used in workplaces now are sort of shifting towards more of that um, project-based collaboration kind of platform, right. a bit of social stuff in there as well. You know, they're, they're a bit more um, uh, interactive. They're a, they're a place where ideas can be shared and worked yep. on and yeah, yeah. And whatever. So, so at Griffith, you still use an LMS for for curriculum content, and then you use something like Teams to wrap the collaborative experience around that. Is that the way you sort of see it? Yeah, or? right. Yeah. So, generally, in LMSs, the things like the discussion forums, which have tradi traditionally been the way in which we communicate with our students and communicate students communicate with each other, are fairly linear, and so they don't allow for uh, things like chat and all kinds of them. I mean, some of them are starting to, but something like uh, teams which was really adopted very heavily over the last year or so have given us a whole new perspective and a whole new way in which we can collaborate with our students and particularly students collaborating together in you know in private channels and different channels of of work uh something that the lms something the lmss don't handle particularly well at this point and uh you know, Really, they don't need to, to some degree. So many LMSs are, are there and are used predominantly to moderate um, content and to also moderate things like assessment. And so that there's a consistency across the use of those things. Uh, you know, for probably a decade now, lecturers have been taking people out to Facebook and to other social networks to mm. do this, what has been essentially now what you can do in Teams having that social networking side of things within within a, uh, an environment that uh, is is free of ads and uh, extraneous information that potentially can distract the student from their, what they're actually there to do. Yeah. And so when, when you work with um, teachers or lecturers at university who are trying to plan for online learning in, the, in this, um, whether it's to do with the current challenge the world's in or whether even before that, Mm. Do you do you talk to them about the types of pedagogies that are useful online? You know, the the how do how do they create peer to peer interaction? Oh, yeah. You know, how is it not just one way transmission of teachers teaching, but it's more about learners learning together? Do you do you talk to them about that? And what sort of ideas do you have? Uh, yeah, yeah. So I mean, to be technical, it's called socio pedagogy, uh, socio constructivist pedagogy, which is yeah. I'm not going to get into. But the thought is that we are co constructing our learning. Right. The, the, the lecturer is more of a coach or a peer on the side who is actually guiding the, the thoughts and the, the development of the thoughts of the students and things like that, mm -hmm. kind of bringing them back onto the right path if they start steering off path and things like that. So it's really helping students take control of their own learning and not just a force feeding information into them. It's allowing them to uh, experiment with each other, to share ideas and to get the peer networks happening to allow them to 
which is what they'll be doing in the workplace again. So, so yeah. it's really a matter of taking them from this no, notion where they come from school, where it has been a, quite a bit of spoon feeding, to the mm-hmm. notion that, okay, somehow we're going to transition you from that place through to this this work ready person who is actually going to be contributing from day one. And so it's really a matter of how we train our students to contribute uh, yeah. to, to the, the knowledge, the growth of knowledge to become uh, thought leaders in their own right. Yeah, one of the, um, I think one of the challenges is always, especially when it comes to teachers relinquishing control and, and you know, allowing students to be the leaders of their learning and to start their own conversations about things and share resources themselves. And, it, it, you know, some some teachers might think, oh, you know, I'm I'm kind of losing control of that, but it's actually in a positive way. What are your thoughts on um, change management and adoption and how, how do you work with people at Griffith, whether it's technology related, you know, change management, so training people or getting something kickstarted, or yeah. whether it's pedagogical movement around design of courses and so forth. Yeah, I mean, we we see that lecture that in the vast majority, lecturers want to do the right things by the students. Yeah. So they're not trying to be, uh, they're not trying to inhibit their the way they teach. They're not trying to that they've learnt in a particular way themselves, and you know that might have been 10, 15, some cases, thirty years prior to what they're doing now. And so there's mindsets that are developed and are reinforced through social or cultural, cultural issues that take a little bit to break down sometimes. And so mm-hmm. we uh, we're very much about showing our lecturers the uh, the advantages of doing things in a certain way, not telling them they have to do them in a certain way. Yeah. So uh, it's about us kind of walking the talk in a sense so us as educational developers and things like that we need to be we are showing our staff uh, trying to lead them through the use of the tools that we have to use the tools in the same way so for example uh, we with this whole COVID thing that's happening at the moment uh, we've had to stick all our courses online very quickly over you know period of two or three weeks we've had to get all our stuff online now a lot of our staff have never done this before um, you know, we've we've had a, we've got fifty thousand students. We've had about fifteen thousand who would do an online course, at least one online course in their studies. Uh, but we've that's you know what's that's another thirty five thousand students who have never done this before, and their associated lecturers and things like that. So uh, over the last few weeks, we've been really ramping up our our training on the use of uh, things like Blackboard Collaborate, Teams, uh, Stream, and other other black. Uh, other uh, Microsoft tools, and we've had hundreds and, and literally mm. hundreds of staff participate in this training because there's a thirst. They know that they have to do this not just so that they can uh, survive, but they actually are now starting to see that this is oh okay, we're getting into this and starting to see that there are opportunities and they want to know the opportunities that are available there for them. And so it's not just saying okay, you've got to do it this way. It is actually showing them by using the tools ourselves to train them with ah yeah okay yes i can see that uh i mean we ran out uh teams across the institution about a year ago and it's just astonishing how quickly it's grown not just in terms of teaching but also in the way in which our academic groups our faculties and stuff are communicating with each other and sharing right. information across their discipline groups and things like that yeah interesting is everyone board no not yet uh you know will everybody be on board well yeah, they're going to have to be, I suppose. Mm. <laughs> yeah, over time. Um, okay. And so, do, do you think, as a as a result of the you know the COVID pandemic and what's happening at the moment, and and you're saying that there's hundreds of lecturers and teachers turning up to suddenly get some professional learning they might not have otherwise had around the use of technology. Do you think that once this is finished, um, universities will ever be the same again, or do you think there's some things <laughs> that we'll we'll do now and learn now and experience now and create now that might sort of shape the way we think about learning in universities moving forward yeah no you've hit the nail on the head there absolutely uh it's it's we are moving into a new paradigm altogether here uh yes there'll be yes people will still want to do some lectures and things like that but will they do them in exactly the same way will they just go back to the way they were doing things i don't think so i think they've we're going to learn a whole lot of lessons and st- staff are learning a whole lot of lessons really quickly in how we can do things in alternate ways, which both give them uh, alternatives moving forward, 
but also give the students the taste of what else can happen as well. So, I mean, most students, uh, you know, study nine to five at school, as it were, or whatever it is, nine to three at school. They come to university and do exactly the same thing. They turn up to class and things like that. Um, and now there's, they're starting to see, oh, okay. See, we're not actually getting that much pushback from students at this point, at this at this time with our with these online classes. They they know what these issues are. They they're in exactly the same boat as our staff are. So uh, they can see and are, are making the most of these opportunities. Uh, you know, we just had our census date. We didn't have that many students drop out you know, over their courses, which is really great. They're kind of taking it in their stead and kind of saying, okay, well, you know, uh, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. But it is going to change fundamentally the way we move forward, uh, oh. and the, and the the amount of training we have done over the last uh, three weeks is probably equivalent to the amount of training we would have done in a year in this stuff, and so right. it's <laughs> it's been pretty amazing to watch how uh, staff are responding and really taking uh, taking hold of the challenge and running with yeah. it. Yeah, and so do you work with um, you know in your role around sort of a, a partially evaluating technologies and the role it might be able to play in in uh, learning at the university. Do you work with um, sort of teacher support teams that work in faculties who might be helping yeah. teachers to create courses? And how, how many of those do you have? And how does that work? Do you, is it like a train the trainer kind of model or how does it work? Yeah, so we have, uh, um, as part of that learning futures group, there's, there's yeah. probably about, uh, well, there's about 40 or so within the group. And that's a centralized group, but each of our four major academic groups uh, in faculties and other language, uh, each have their own little teams of, of uh, learning teaching consultants, anywhere from uh, six to eight to ten kind of consultants per academic group. We are the central group that kind of collate all the university information around these uh, tools and, and techniques. And then they kind of, uh, we work closely with them to kind of co-create some of this stuff. But we collate that information through our various databases and SharePoint sites and team sites. And we kind of facilitate that for the academic, those learning teaching consultants in the academic groups. Yes, they have their own team sites and things within the groups, and so they should. But we kind of facilitate the central version of that so that they can draw on uh, consistent information that's uh, being spread across the university. Yeah, and you, you, um, you've obviously got some some teachers, some lecturers who are sort of leading from the front and probably had an interest in this kind of teaching well before you know the yeah, current yeah. need um can you share with us a couple of examples or an example of of someone who's you know really forging ahead and some of the things that they're doing so we can get a picture of what that might look like yeah. okay so yeah there's a there's an academic in our pharmacology uh group who uh who's really taken off with teams uh gary grant uh, is his name and he is uh really going gangbusters he's made a virtual uh, a virtual pharma pharmacy and he takes students uh through this virtual pharmacy, they have interactions around, you know, as though they were uh, uh, working with clients and things like that. And he's really taken off with the use of Teams particularly, uh, and the channels within Teams and the tabs within Teams. He's kind of created this space, uh, heavily using OneNote and inking and things like that to work with his students uh, in this space. Uh, it's quite astonishing the, the amount of time he puts into this, and yet. And he gets such a buzz out of it too. It's, I was just talking to him the other day. He's got more and more ideas all the time, and it's just uh, it's it's uh, quite infectious actually. And yeah. uh, but that's that's just one guy who's kind of leading on the way. And with, you know, we, he's talking about how we use, we use bots within the space and to to proactively answer questions of students without having to necessarily answer every question. Uh, fantastic stuff. But that's that's the kind of extreme. On the other yeah. end of the spectrum, we have now hundreds and hundreds of courses using teams in a more uh social way just around students being able to collaborate so uh and literally every one of our griffith online courses has a, a has teams associated with it our new bachelor of business which is being run out for next year is you know is very much is based around the use of teams as well as our lms and it's uh it's it's uh uh, now, not about those necessarily uh, one-offs. It's actually becoming uh, almost uh, well. It's just becoming part of the way we live, and yeah. it's, it's now starting to get to that point where we we thought, oh yeah, okay, trimester one we might have 30, 40 courses using Teams. We've got hundreds of courses using Teams. Mm. It's just taking off that quickly. Yeah. 
Um, I suppose a, a, a final thing I'd like to get your thoughts on is um, the changing nature of assessment as a result of this. You know, how how how's the university or how are you thinking about that? How are lecturers trying to think about it at the moment? Do you think, mm -hmm. um, you know, assessment might change or uh, are we eventually going to get to a point potentially where some of the uh, the information out of the platform of how much they're collaborating or how much they're contributing or whatever will be part of that assessment or, or how do you think assessment's going to change as a result of moving to online for a lot of courses? I think uh, it's around the notion of the peer. Uh, up until the, the, the notion of this COVID thing came along in May, we were going to run a, uh, a major workshop for the sector called the power of the peer and how different peer tools are being used within the sector to uh, for students to work together, but also assess each other and things like that. So, uh, for example, if a student submits an assignment and three other students have to review that assignment, they're not just, they just haven't, and each student is submitting an assignment, they haven't just learned from the fact that they've written their own assignment. They're also learning from the three different perspectives of these other students that have written the same assignment. That have written it from a different perspective so all of a sudden there's this and they have to process this information and they have to give feedback to these other students in terms of what their assessments how that how they saw their assessments so all of a sudden you kind of got this uh, mushrooming effect of students being able to not just learn from content but also learn from each other and being able to critically analyze other students work we see peer assessment particularly as being one of the ways in which uh, things like teams can help students interact with each other um, and there are other tools of course associated with that but uh, we see the notion of um, exams and alternate ways open book exams becoming more popular mm. uh, we see more presentation styles i mean it's great to be able to for example give feedback to assessment using voice rather than text so there's this social presence thing. So I mean, the use of Teams, for, uh, the Teams meetings, for example, just like one of these, where you can actually just hit into record a video that yeah. gives you feedback to your students and can be able to point things out in the assignment as you're doing that feedback and things like that. So it's not just about the assessment itself, it's about how we create uh, learning yeah. from the way we assess assessment as well. Mm. Very interesting. We could. Uh we could talk for hours about about this and about the uh, potential changes that we're we're all going to experience. So, um, thank you so much for your time having a chat um, with us today. I've got more yeah. to say. Oh, well, <laughs> well, feel free. <laughs> How's your time? Um, it's been great to talk to you, and um, not only your work at um, at Griffith, but also your work with the Australasian Council of Open Distance and E-Learning is uh, really crucial at this time. And I'm sure there's a lot of people sort of leaning towards the things you're talking about, and uh, right. and uh, hoping that you can help lots and lots yeah. of people around the around the world to deal with this sort of thing. So, yeah. uh, Michael, thank you so much for your time today, and uh, we'll chat to you again soon. Real pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Cheers.